Okay guys, I promise you this isn't another gaming keyboard, and I'm sure most of you would have realized that with the intro. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you guys to the Craft Keyboard by Logitech. This is a complete package for creative professionals who are looking to take their interactive experience with their respective work to the next level, but it comes at a cost. For $200, this is an expensive investment, and you should seriously think twice before taking the plunge, uh, unless if you're confident that this would optimize your workflow. And I'm hoping by the end of this video, you will come to a thorough understanding as to how uh, the Craft Keyboard works, uh, specifically, you know, with certain programs, and it will perhaps uh, make, um, you know, your purchasing decision. Uh, so let's dive into this, but first, a quick message from our sponsor. You can only rely on the pro to do the job with every keystroke satisfying like the millions before it. Quality feel with every key, regardless of your space. Cooler Master Master Keys Pro, take it with you, make it yours. Let's get some basic stuff out of the way, since I'm sure most of you are excited to see how the creative dial input performs. First order of business, the design, and I love it. Personally, it's a welcoming change from a traditional gaming keyboard, and I've always had a soft spot for minimalist design boards, and the craft delivers exactly that. It's a full-size keyboard that comes with this matte gray coating, otherwise known as graphite, throughout the chassis. The edges are rounded, which gives it a unique appearance uh, when it's on a desk. Uh, and for those of you wondering, it, this complements the MX Master 2S mouse really well. As you can see, the uniformity with the color scheme is top notch. So if you're planning to build a simple setup, here you go. The build quality gets a solid 8 out of 10. And the reason I say that is I've seen keyboards that are less expensive featuring metal housings. The main body of the craft is primarily made out of hard plastic materials, but it has some serious heft to it, resulting in a structure that's barely flexible, so that's awesome. This partly also has to do with the metal housing on the top portion of the keyboard that carries all the electronics inside, including the touch sensor for the dial. The keys are well spaced out throughout the body, but most importantly, each individual keys feature these rounded concave shaped design that's supposed to complement your typing experience. It took me a few days to get used to, but boy, does it align really well with my fingertips. You won't notice the texture difference once you get accustomed to these new keys, so if I were you, I wouldn't worry about discomfort in the long run. The Craft is cross-platform compatible, meaning it should work with both Windows and Mac OS, uh, and they have carefully labeled the uh, Start and Command keys uh, right beside the spacebar key, although I did find it a little bit confusing at times where I would accidentally hit uh, one or the other. Uh, but uh, I would have preferred some neutral signs uh, on both these keys because seriously, um, it's it's really confusing. I mean, it's probably just me, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Logitech uses scissor type mechanism to actuate the keystrokes. This eliminates an unnecessary wobbling around the corners of each key, therefore resulting in consistent actuations. The slim profile of the keys along with their shorter travel times made typing faster from my usage. I can't scientifically test how faster or slower these switches are when compared to a full-size mechanical keyboard or a mechanical switch, um, but here's my verdict on these low-profile scissor type switches. Uh, they are of great quality uh, and they don't require too much force to actuate and they're pretty fast. The keys are individually backlit and they are very bright during low light conditions. There is a proximity sensor located at the top right hand side of the keyboard that detects your hands when it approaches the unit and it lights up the keyboard automatically. It's a great feature to have especially when you're working those night hours, but I wished it only worked during those hours and not during daytime as well. Uh, this could have extended the battery life significantly. Speaking of battery life, uh, the Craft is a wireless keyboard and it connects to your computer via the unifying USB receiver or Bluetooth. It comes with the EasyShift technology that switches between three different devices and there are dedicated buttons for that task. It works really well and I have it paired with my desktop, laptop and even my smartphone. The media playback buttons along with other controls like volume adjust, brightness adjust, task view and action center are implemented within the function keys and they are assigned as primary buttons out of the box, but the user can always switch back to the standard mode uh, through the software. I should also mention that you can program these function keys through the software and Logitech has included a handful of commands that users can take advantage of. This also applies to those dedicated keys that are located at the top row section of the numpad. 
although I would leave them as is since uh, they are important shortcuts anyway, except for a few that you could customize. Ultimately, it's your call and I'm glad that Logitech has opened their options to the end user. Quick note on angle adjustments, uh, there are none on the craft keyboard, although by design, the metal casing at the top angles the keyboard by just a bit and that's all you get. Now, does that affect ergonomics? Not really, at least for me, but it's something to be aware of before making the purchase. All right, I think it's about time to talk about the creative input dial on the craft keyboard, otherwise known as the crown. And you know what? This is what makes this keyboard stand out from the competition, and I think some creative professionals might find this an attractive feature. So, what exactly does it do? Well, it instantly accesses specific functions for certain programs and allows the user to adjust values. It's also touch sensitive, meaning programs that require multiple functions within a contextual tool can take advantage of the dial. Although you have to be really careful when operating it as it's a little too sensitive. Let me show you a quick demo as to how it works. So what you're looking at right now is a screen capture of the desktop and I have an overlay shot of me playing around with the dial uh, in real time. Let's kick things off with the options software. Uh, so as you can see, I have the MX Master 2S mouse and the craft keyboard paired up. Let's quickly switch over to the crown segment and we can see that we can customize three functions. So there's turn, press, and press and turn. So in my case, I have the turn feature set to adjust the volume. And as you can see, it does exactly that. When I press the dial, it plays or pauses a certain music track, but in this case, I don't have a music player open, so that's okay. Uh, when I press and turn, uh, this switches between applications. So that is a pretty cool feature. Like I said, you can also customize these options um, with certain you know controls. So in this case, we have the option to uh, do a desktop switch if we want to, or you could just leave it as none if you really don't want to play around with uh, default settings. Now, when you install the options software, Logitech automatically scans the programs that you have installed in your computer, and uh, it check marks uh, those, those applications and you know requests you to install uh, the profiles for those applications. So like, as you see here, I have Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Chrome, Edge, and um, Excel, PowerPoint, and Word installed. I don't have Illustrator because I haven't, I don't have that program installed on it, but for now, let's just work with a few applications here. Let's kick things off with Edge. The function's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is just turn and it'll switch between tabs. So that's a cool way if you have multiple tabs open, uh, this is a great way to just skim over those tabs and uh, look at, you know, just browse through what you're looking at, which is great. Uh, let's switch over to Word here for a second. Here, what you could do is change the theme style of the text. So all I have to do is just scroll the dial and it'll just change the theme uh, just like that. Now, if you wanna change the theme color, or the theme font, there are three more options. If you pay close attention to the bottom uh, section of the screen, there are three options that are grayed out. So if you need to access them, all you need to do is just tap and you can adjust the theme color uh, just like that. Now, if you wanna change the theme font, you can just tap one more time and that will just adjust the theme font. So it works really well. Uh, it's a little touch sensitive to be honest because you know you can accidentally just click or you know tap on the theme style instead of adjusting the font. So it really does take a little while to get used to. Now another thing I could do is just select the text and adjust the font if I want to and it does a really good job doing that. I can also change the paragraph style or I can also align the text. So let's just leave it centralized because Austin is awesome. Moving over to Excel, there are a few uh, options that you could access within the dial. So as you can see, I have a benchmarks a file where I compare different uh, PCs and uh, what you're looking at right now is GPU temperatures, everything's laid out really well. So if I twist the dial, what I can do is adjust the sheet navigation so I can scroll through different sheets that I have within that file. Now, if I tap one more time on the dial, I can uh, scroll and shift between uh, horizontal cells. So not it doesn't have a vertical cell option, but this is great if you're just you know scrolling through cells. Uh, there's also one more option to zoom uh, if you want to get a better view of the chart. So that's uh, that's a really cool option. And there are other ways that you can also take advantage of the dial. So for instance, if I click on the chart, I can adjust uh, between different charts that I'd like to access. So in this case, I can go 3D if I want to do that. Although I prefer it as it was in the beginning. Uh, I can also do a quick layout shift if I want to just uh, shift between different layouts. Uh, there's also the change, if I want to change the color of a chart, I could do that. But in this case, I have it set at default, so it won't really, you know, shift that. Uh, and I can also change the chart style if I want to just go uh, with a different theme. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. 
Now, Photoshop is where things get a little interesting. So in this case, I have a thumbnail opened up, a uh, very straightforward thumbnail. This was for the Narbox review. So uh, what I'm going to do is just adjust the dial. I'm going to scroll the dial. And you can, as you can see, um, it adjusts the brightness of, uh, of the photo. So uh, it takes a little while to catch up. I mean, it all depends on how fast your computer is, because remember, Photoshop is an intensive program and it requires a speedy computer. Uh, but it does get the job done really well. So I'm just going to leave the brightness to zero because I like the way how it is. I can also adjust the contrast if I want to. So uh, that's a great way to add a little bit of blacks. I can also adjust the saturation. Unfortunately, there isn't an option to change the vibrancy, uh, but um, it is something that uh, hopefully I'm hoping that Logitech would add uh, in an update. Now, another cool feature that you could do with the dial is adjust the brush size. So if I want to add a lens flare effect, I can just uh, click on you know the brush, the brush paint tool and uh, start adding colors. So I can adjust the brush size, change the colors quickly and um, you know, add a blend mode and call it a day. You know, these are some of the things that I see myself using on a regular basis. So I'm really glad that Logitech has added these implementations within creative programs, except for Premiere Pro, because there are only two ways to take advantage of the dial. The first thing is to uh, navigate through the timeline. The other option is to use a jog wheel function that uh, just scrolls to the timeline by frames. I don't see using that as a feature, but uh, the timeline navigation works really well and I'm glad that, you know, it works just as it should. So at least, you know, we have something. Let's talk about battery life on the Craft Keyboard. Now Logitech advertises uh, a full week of usage out of this guy and I was able to hit that timeline, no problem. In, in some cases, I even uh, went more than that, uh, more than a week of usage. So that was awesome on the Craft Keyboard. Now. This all depends on usage. So in my case, I spend the majority of my time filming in the studio. So I don't spend, you know, 99% of the day on my desk editing videos. I you know, move around. So like I said, uh, it definitely hits the mark as what Logitech advertises, but I would have preferred uh, a longer battery on this guy. But most importantly, uh, if you recalled the backlighting feature that turns on automatically works during daytime. So if they you know, somehow find a way to disable that, maybe through software, um, that, you know, that could have significantly improved the battery life. So to conclude, I think it's safe to say that the Craft Keyboard from Logitech deserves its own space within the keyboard market. Uh, from a design standpoint, it's a great addition to a simple and elegant setup, especially when you pair it with the MX Master 2S mouse. And the integrated creative input dial works amazing with programs like Photoshop, Excel, and some other productive tasks. Personally, I wasn't impressed with the profiles for Premiere Pro, uh, specifically because the dial only helps you navigate through the timeline. So I wish, you know, there were more options to adjust the brightness uh, or the contrast, the exposure, vibrancy, and the intensity of an indie filter. Some, you know, some features within the Lumetri panel would have been a great addition, and I'm sure they could add these with a software update. And I've um, recalled a few updates that were pushed on within option software while my testing period. So it looks like Logitech is listening to the community and I'm just waiting for that update. But should you spend $200 on this keyboard? I'm going to let you guys decide on that because for one, I know we do focus on a lot of mechanical keyboards, especially, you know, gaming oriented keyboards. And this one's completely, you know, out of the equation as to what we review. But as a creative professional, as a content creator, I do find that, you know, the dial is an excellent addition to the craft keyboard. Obviously, the Mentation of Premiere Pro, as I mentioned earlier, is a bummer. But, you know, people who use a lot of Photoshop or, you know, people who are working with a lot of numbers within Excel, uh, can definitely take advantage of the dial. So I would say it would be a great investment um, if you end up doing a lot more work within those programs. And so that's it for me. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the Craft Keyboard from Logitech. Uh, is it worth its price? And would you consider uh, picking one up? Are you you know, excited about the dial? And what are your thoughts on this dial specifically with its implementation and how it works with software? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content. And we'll see you in the next one.